Listo? Listo. Okay, we are in Columbia, South Carolina after an amazing brunch and an extraordinary church service today um, with uh, Reverend Jackson uh, at Brooklyn. Um, and now I'm with the minority leader of the South Carolina State House, Representative Todd Rutherford, who has invited us to join him on the State House grounds to see a monument that he was just telling me about at, at breakfast. So I'm gonna allow him to introduce himself, but ladies and gentlemen, this is Todd Rutherford. <laughs> Todd Rutherford, how's everybody? And welcome to Columbia, South Carolina and to the State House grounds, which is a ground literally filled with statues that are related to the Confederacy. And as we walk, um, we had a huge fight in the past 21 years since I've gotten here about the Confederate flag. The Confederate flag sat on top of the dome. It sat in both chambers when I got here. So when you pledge allegiance in the morning, you pledge allegiance literally to the Confederate flag sitting next to the American flag we were finally able to take it down with the death of Senator Pinckney. And with that, because prior to that, we took it down off the dome and put it right in the front yard. Right. Uh, as an affront to the people in my district, it starts right over there. And to African Americans throughout this state, they put it literally right in the front yard mm. where anyone could have gotten access to it. And in fact, my client, Bree Newsom, climbed up and took it down. Really? Prior to that, we all thought it was locked down and chained, and it really wasn't. She just climbed up and unhooked it and took it down. I uh, went and to jail, and the charge, I defended her, and the charges got dismissed. But throughout all of that, what a lot of people may have noticed when you saw pictures of Dylan, and I don't even want to talk about him, but for the fact that he did kill a friend of mine, Senator Pinkney, what you noticed was a picture of him at the African American Monument. The significance was that he was standing right here. And this is a ship or a model of a ship used in the Middle Passage. And he was standing in the middle of it with his Confederate flags and he was doing this. And if you've never been here, you didn't know that these are the bodies of the people that were kidnapped, people, human beings kidnapped from Africa and brought over to South Carolina because this, is, this represents the Middle Passage. And so he took the time to stand on the bodies with his Confederate flag to show how evil he was and to try and start his race war. As we know, he's not successful, it didn't happen. But that's why that picture was so significant. The press never talked about it, he didn't really know it. But these are the bodies that were tied down to the bottom of the ship that made that middle passage that didn't last for a couple of seconds, that didn't last for a couple of hours. This passage lasted for months. And if you go to the African American Museum in, in uh, DC, you see the numbers on the manifest. They'd start off with 400 slaves, 400 people. By the time they get to Charleston, they have 100. They'd start off at 300. By the time they get to Charleston, they have 200. Hundreds of people dying in that middle passage, jumping overboard, because they're chained down to the bottom of the ship they would use the bathroom, their feces, their urine is down there, they'd get sick, and they had no patience for sick slaves, they'd throw, toss them off the ship. Mm -hmm. And so this is representative of South Carolina and how far we've come, and yet how far we have to go. And you see our struggle as African Americans as we go forward with Dr. King, with uh, Ronald McNair who died uh, on the space shuttle. This is the struggle of African Americans in, in this state. And these are some of the stones that came from Sierra Leone, from Senegal, from Ghana, the Congo. All African Africans at that time are representative of countries in Africa that had people leave and end up in Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about literally over centuries, thousands and thousands of Africans that ended up in this state and are now still trying to fight for what we believe is our freedom. And so that's why I wanted to bring you here. This statues monument sits right across from the Ben Tillman monument. Ben Tillman openly advocated for the killing of Negroes. He talked about hanging people, hanging black people as we got our rights to vote. And it's, his statue still stands on these grounds and they call him a great American on that statue. Mm. I put a bill in several years ago that would simply tell the truth and say that Ben Tillman wanted to kill black people if they tried to vote. So that we have a more representative uh, statuary on our grounds telling the truth to South Carolinians and to Americans as they come up here, but enabling them to see what South Carolina was and what South Carolina is. Tell me how the political progress in this state was possible to have this monument here, to take down the Confederate uh, battle flag, um, to acknowledge the truth and the facts and the history as, as you just said that you attempted to do by the introduction of that bill. What does it take politically to, to make this possible? Power concedes nothing without struggle power concedes nothing without a fight, and that's what we've done. Uh, since I've been 
in this House for 21 years and those prior to Senator Patterson, whose shoulders I stood on to come up here and say, listen, all we want is a chance. All we want is an opportunity to do better than where we are now. We want the same chance that your children have. And in fighting for that, it took so much. It took actually the death of nine people in Charleston. And without that, I don't believe that the flag would have ever come down. Mm -hmm. And even when that happened, people still wanted to keep it up. As we fight for educational equality even now, it's a battle that rages on in South Carolina because in South Carolina, our constitution allows for a minimally adequate school system. We still don't have it. The, the school district sued, they won, and we still have not fixed anything. And as we continue to fight that battle, not just for African-American children, but for all children, because for anybody that is depressed, anybody that is held down, if you hold somebody down, you have to stay down there with them. We want South Carolina to do better, and we need your help to do that. We're happy that you came here. We're happy that you're seeing this monument. I'm, I'm grateful to be here. And I, I got to tell you, just in this short visit, our second visit to South Carolina, we have learned so much. We were yesterday in Charleston at the 50th anniversary of the MUSC uh, health worker strike. 12 nurses fired for standing up for themselves, for, for better wages, better working conditions, the ability to bargain, uh, use um, the value they're providing to their patients to exact better working conditions for themselves. And in that march, we met this extraordinary gentleman named Damon Fordham, who is a historian. And he told me something I didn't know. He said, USC integrated in 1873 until 1877. And then it took until the mid 1960s to integrate again. And in some part of that, I asked you this political question, how, how do you make this possible? Damon was telling me, politically, it was possible in 1873 to do this. And then we, we lost our will or ability to protect people against hatred, against violence, against those who could take others' lives, as, as we saw in, in Charleston, that horrific church shooting. And I think it was also, his words were kind of a warning that whatever progress we're making right now, uh, it is not guaranteed. It, it can only be kept, only expanded upon by fighting politically, That's right. uh, which is what you're doing here in, in the State House. And over breakfast, really learned a lot from you about how you've been able to advance agendas on excellence in public education, um, not just working with Democrats, but Republicans as well, uh, making sure that we have real justice reform and looking at it from the, the social justice, but also the taxpayer expense, sure. uh, trying to bring everybody into the conversation and serving everyone. And it's the only way this country is gonna address issues like these and other issues that we care about. So we're grateful, grateful for the tour. Anything else that you want us to know about in terms of what we're seeing here on the state grounds or the work that you're doing in the state house? Well, no, it's more just about South Carolina. And I, and I think, again, we hosted our first NCAA tournament this year. Duke actually almost lost uh, in our arena right down the street. We were able to do that because we put aside our differences, put aside our hate, took the flag off the state house grounds. So if South Carolina can be emblematic to this country about putting aside our differences and moving forward, we can show what can be done. You can do it. If you're elected president, you can do it if you're a Democratic nominee, and we look forward to help, trying to help you do it. Thank you. Really, really grateful for this time. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it for what you're doing. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us, and we will be coming back <coughs> online at Clemson later today at, I believe, 4 o'clock. Chris, Clemson at 4 o'clock. If you're in the area, we'd love to see you. If not, uh, you can tune in on Facebook Live. Thank you.